Industrial production is an important economic data release and I'll be explaining it to you in this video. This is part of a series we're doing where we explain all the economic data releases that you see in the monthly cycle which impact the markets and we go through what they all are and how they relate to each other. So hit the thumbs up button if you're finding these helpful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of them. So what is industrial production? Industrial production measures the output of a range of industries that typically include manufacturing, mining and utilities. For most advanced economies, industry only makes up a small portion of the economy, but they're still sensitive to changes in it. Now, as we've explained in one of our previous episodes on the Philly Fed survey, which you can watch by clicking up here, for the US at least, manufacturing accounts for 11% of the US economy and almost 8.5% of payrolls. However, it also supports many other sectors within the economy and many more jobs indirectly. So even though as a percentage of GDP, industrial production is on the decline, for now at least, it remains an important part of the economy. In the US, industrial production data is released by the Federal Reserve on a monthly basis and it's measured in the production index. This shows the percentage change in real output, which excludes inflation, and can be shown as yearly or monthly data. For the Fed's release, it also comes alongside the capacity index that measures capacity utilization. This shows the ratio of output to capacity, so how much spare capacity there is to increase production. Industrial production data is released for other economies as well, and there'll be some slight differences in how they're collected and reported, but they follow similar principles. When industrial production is on the rise, this is usually a pretty good indicator that the economy is getting stronger as more orders are being placed for goods. If more orders are being placed, that should result in economic growth. So in other words, it means that GDP could be on the rise and the opposite can be true as well. Slowing or falling production output could be a sign that the economy is weaker and economic growth is slowing or potentially even declining. However, things like weather can also impact production output. For example, if the weather is particularly cold, then we'd expect to see an increase as there's more demand for utilities. Severe weather could even take production offline and result in a decline, although this typically would only be a short-term fluctuation, but it could compound other problems if capacity utilization is already high. Capacity utilization is also a fairly useful indicator, particularly for measuring changes in demand and potentially inflation. If there's overcapacity, meaning there's not much room to increase production, that can show that there's high demand and prices are likely to increase. On the other hand, if there's undercapacity, demand for goods could be falling and may result in prices declining. So overall, the capacity index can show the Federal Reserve how much slack there is in the economy and if there's more room to grow before inflation will start to kick in. And if higher or lower prices from this are impacting inflation, this may show in PPI first, which could then later be passed on to consumers, which would then show in CPI and PCE releases. And these can have a big influence on monetary policy since inflation is part of the Federal Reserve dual mandate. Now to understand CPI inflation click up here to watch our episode on that and click down here for the episode on PPI. Don't forget to hit the like button if you're finding this series helpful and I'll see you in the next one.